Hello and welcome to the Fat Boss Guide to Feng the Accursed 10-Man Heroic in the Mogushan Vault. Hello, and this fight on Heroic has a whole new phase, which yes. is the uh, main difference, and it's it, fun, it's a it's, good phase. It's a very good fight overall, very, very nice. Now, if you haven't seen the um, normal mode guide to this fight, then do click up on the annotation that you see on your screen now, and that'll take you over to that, because we're not going to be covering all the normal mode stuff again, because it's, it's very similar. Now for this encounter, you want to bring two tanks, three healers, and a mixture of DPS. It doesn't really matter if you bring ranged or melee, they're both just as good as each other. However, you do want to bring stuff that has high AoE, um, such as demo locks, um, elemental shamans, stuff like that. Because of the new phase, there's a lot of AoE that you need to be doing on some ads. Now before we get to that phase, we're going to talk about the encounter as a whole. And like we say, it does have an extra phase, so it has four phases now. And the phases will start at 100%, 75%, 50%, and 25%. Uh, and the new thing that you can do on Heroic is that you can actually choose the order of which the phases come. Yeah. Um, and you do this by positioning the boss nearest whatever weapon that starts that phase. Yeah, so if you take him near the staff, then he'll start doing the staff phase first and fifth weapons, fifth weapon phase first. It's, it's all practically like that. Now the order that we uh, highly recommend that you do is staff, then shield, which is the uh, new phase, um, then fist, and then spear. Now really you can do whatever phase you want, um, however every time he does go into a new phase he gains a permanent 5% damage increase, so obviously in the last phase he's doing 20% more damage, and yeah. that kind of, that's why we've decided to do this particular order. So the phase that we're going to cover first is obviously the first phase, which is the staff phase. Um, and the boss has gained no extra abilities in this phase. The tank will still have the debuff that you need to taunt around two or three stacks. He'll still do the crazy AoE, which you need to stand you know, right Close underneath for, him yeah. for. And people will still get the resonance debuff. Yes. So you need, you need to make sure that when you do stack underneath the boss for the velocity, that you don't have the resonance buff. And the resonance buff can still overlap with the velocity Cast. So you need to make sure that you always move out on velocity before it's the duration is finished, and you always need to make sure that you move in, like very very quickly, but obviously not too quick because you can run in with a debuff and you're going to fucking kill everyone. Now, really, in this phase, you want to look at having no more than four velocities, but it's e e you can easily do it with three. You can actually transition the boss with only three velocities. However, if you use the nullification barrier on the first and the third. Um, you should really look at having another velocity go off, so you have four velocities. So you want to use the barrier on the first, heal the second one, barrier on the third, and heal the fourth one. So if you are about to transition after the third one, just wait off a little bit, because you're going to need the nullification barrier for the first ability in the next phase, which we're going to talk about now. So yeah, once the boss does hit 75% health, then you have the ability to transition him. And you want to be tanking him by the shield, so you can go to the shield phase, which is the new one. Now in the shield phase, there's three abilities, just like there are in every other phase. He's got a tank dot, which doesn't really do... Yeah, it's just the tank dot, taunt off each other. Um, he's also got a chain lightning ability. Uh, this doesn't really do too much. It doesn't really do too much damage. You shouldn't really be worrying yeah. about it. But the third ability is a new and interesting one. And it's called Siphoning Shield. Feng will throw his shield on the ground, and when he does this, it will spawn an ad on top of every single player apart from the tanks. These ads will then start walking towards the shield. Each ad that hits the shield, when Feng eventually absorbs the shield, will heal him for like a lot. Yeah. So you, yeah, it's a, it's which is really really bad. So what you need to do when these ads spawn is prevent them from reaching the shield. Now these ads can be stunned, they can be AOE gripped. And yeah, you just need to nuke the living shit out of them. And like we said previously, demo locks and elemental shamans are very, very strong for this. Anyone with high AoE. Now, if you use the nullification barrier on top of the shield, then all the adds will despawn. Now, there is a bug at the moment where not all the adds will despawn and one will stay up or something like that. But we can assure you that if you do get this bug, you can just ignore that ad. It's, it's, it won't get absorbed on the next shield, so just leave it alone. But yeah, that is a known bug. But yeah, don't worry about that. So the, the way that you want to do this encounter is just have everyone stacked in the middle the whole time. Make sure that Feng's facing away from the raid because he'll always throw the shield in front of him. And you want to use Nullification Barrier on the first. You want to AoE the adds down the second time. The third time use Nullification Barrier again. And the fourth one, AoE the adds again. And what you want to try and do when the adds spawn is have Feng on top of the adds. So you can AoE the adds on top of the boss. Yeah, that's really nice. Just extra depths. If you're having a fifth, then yeah, your DPS is too low. You don't want to be having more than four. Otherwise, you're going to be there all day. Yeah. 
Now once you get the boss to 50% health again, you get to choose once more and you're going to be taking the fist weapons this time. Now this third phase, the lightning phase, hasn't really changed too much. Um, there's a slight change to the uh, the way the shockwave works, the lightning fist. Instead of um, one shockwave coming from his lightning fist, three come from, uh, come from it all at once in like a little cone. So one goes forward, one goes forward left, and one goes forward, uh, forward right. So... Otherwise, it's not too much of a major change, but you should really be aware of that. Yeah, you need to make sure that you still use the nullification barrier on the epicenter. And when you don't have nullification barrier, then you want to be using the shroud of reversal. But because of the way that now the shockwave works, um, you really need a DPS to try and get hit by one of these shockwaves. So using like a hunter or something like that just to mitigate some of the damage because it still hurts a fuck ton. Um, it's probably the best way of using the Shroud of Reversal. Using the Shroud of Reversal on the tank and trying to get the tank hit by it, it's a little bit more difficult and heroic. However, if you do completely fuck up and you don't have the stun to stun the epicenter, then just stand as far away as possible and try and out heal it. You should be able to do it, providing you are stacked very, very far away. Now, you should only have around four epicenters or so, but if you do have more, it's not a major issue. Because for the last phase, which is the fire phase, which starts at 25%, um, you, you should still have bloodlust. You want to use bloodlust for this phase and really if you do this correctly You should only ever have to outheal one of the draw flames and this this particular phase is exactly the same as it was on normal mode You just need to put the fires outside the raid out of the group and when draw flames happens If you do have the barrier then use the barrier It will it'll soak up one of them and for the other one You just need to outheal it one thing to note is that if you do have the fire debuff if you put it in the raid Then you're a fucking idiot so yeah, you need to make sure that you move out. <laughs> now one interesting thing about the transition into the last phase is that you can actually squeeze out a little bit more extra DPS because normally you have to tank the boss near the weapons. However, there's only one set of weapons left. So you can tank him on the complete opposite side of the room. So he has to have like plod his way over to those yeah, uh, weapons. It'll, you'll it, gain it, an extra few percent on the boss. It's a make or break sort of thing. It can help you squeeze that. Uh, that kill out. Yeah, but like we say, you should only get two draw flames in this last phase, especially if you have bloodlust up. So yeah, it shouldn't be too much of an issue. So as long as you can really follow that, the fight itself hasn't changed too much apart from the new phase, which it's just a it's new very, phase. It's very it's, simple. It's just phase. the damage is a lot higher, and yeah, it's it's a little bit more challenging. But either all, way, good fight. It's a lovely fight. Thank you for watching guys, if this guide did help you out then please do give us a thumbs up, it helps us out quite significantly, and make sure to comment, rate, and subscribe. And if you'd like to see more 10 man hero guides by Fatboss, please do click up on the annotations on your screen now and it will take you to that video. Yes. Thanks for watching. Thank you for watching.